Right, folks. Well, it's always nice to uh, welcome back uh, a previous guest to rockposer.com. Uh, a gentleman in question uh, on today's uh, chat is uh, a man by the name of Jesse Damon. Of course, some of you will be uh, aware of him from Days of Silent Rage, but of course, a very successful solo artist as well. Jesse, welcome back. Hello, Dan. It's very good to be back here with you on Rock Poser. It's great to speak to you again. Um, you've been very, very busy since the last time we chatted. Uh, you certainly don't slow down um, album release-wise. No, I don't. I, I love uh, writing. That's a passion of mine. I love to create. And uh, the process of the writing and then going in the, the studio and then recording it, it giving birth to the song is, is a passion. So. Obviously, the new album, uh, Damon's Rage, came out uh, at the end of last month. And, of course, uh, you did it all with your um, your part in crime, so to speak, Paul Sabu, once again. Yes, uh, I decided. In, uh, and any time I'm going to go in and do a, a record, I mean, I have had questions and asked, uh, why don't you try another producer? Why don't you try to up the ante and get a better sound or you know, a better production? And and you know uh when you find something that works and you know i like the way paul works with me mm. uh we've got a, a kind of a magical team and uh what we turn out i feel is very good you know so uh that's already set in place um the only thing that changes once in a while is if he has moved and he's in a different vicinity with a different studio but he's been set uh, where he is right now uh, for a couple different albums previous to Damon's Rage. So um, I, I just, you know, I enjoy the process. I, I do drive about an hour and a half to get to where he is from my house close to the beach out over to San Bernardino area in Los Angeles, which is a mountainous area. Mm. And uh, he's got a nice house, nice studio, and it's real nice clean air and and it's a it's a different frame of mind it gives me time to reflect and get ready also warm my voice up if i'm going to be singing that day and so it, it kind of is all good I, I really like it so um well of course the thing is you, uh, you're both so used to working together that you know it's not if you went with a new producer it'd be an awful lot of explaining how you prefer to work and what kind of sound you like to go for and that all that's been taken out of the equation that's true. And when you're doing a big project, which is a full album, and with the process that I go through, uh, you know, there, there's a certain thing I like to do when I go in and take a brand new song in to start recording. Paul knows it, you know. But on the other side of that flip side is I have worked with other producers over the last few years on other projects, but they were usually, uh, you know, focused on a song right and i was involved in either co-writing a song and uh we went in to record the demo or co record it uh to be released and you know that that's a little bit different and it's and it's just as good of a challenge and i enjoy that but of course it's it's a little bit different i don't have as much hands-on you're kind of when you're dealing with a new producer, especially if it's a veteran producer, uh, you kind of have to go with the flow a lot more. Right. Um, Paul and I, you know, have got a, a good friendship, a good relationship working wise. I still, you know, think about him as a mentor and he, he's very knowledgeable. So I lean on him, of course, but when it comes to the, the songwriting, you know, together over the years, writing, co-writing songs so many times, and I've learned my craft and I've learned what I like so I'm a little I feel a little more uh confident you know to be working with him we're talking about songwriting uh, obviously there's uh, 12 tracks on Damon's Rage are all 12 tracks um written fresh for the album or some of them that you've had sort of sitting in your back pocket well I would say 10 of the songs were fresh tracks that I wrote two uh Love Gone Wild was a song that I wrote with Paul a while back, and I kind of forgot about it. And uh, but I, at the time when I didn't record it yet, I kind of just put it away. And uh, 
And then when I did discover it again, looking back and starting the album, I was I was thinking about other songs. Is there anything I have that maybe I can bring uh, that I've written? And I found it and said, Ah, this is a perfect song. This is this is going to go great with what I've already started. So there was that, as well as another song that I just wrote the chorus to, the refrain, and it was to tell me Lily, the song I wrote about. Lily and I and our story. Mm. So how we met and uh, you know our affair. So <laughs> so uh, yeah, th- those two were previously you know uh, written and uh, not not the whole one. Uh, like I said, just just the chorus. So I had to do some. Uh, I chose to finish it by writing our story about ourselves and how we met uh, for Tell Me Lily. And Love Gone Wild, like I said, had been in uh, the can for quite a while. Uh, the rest of them I came up with and, and wrote on my own. Uh, I'm always open to have, you know, Paul help me nip and tuck. And, um, sure. You know, and uh, what he did with Wildest Dreams is we recorded the whole thing. And after sitting with it a little while, he came up with a chant uh through it and i loved it and i thought there's another element it's almost a second uh what, what do you call it a round you need kind of a round gotcha. so that i'm i'm saying and singing the line uh reach my wildest dreams and then we're both doing this big chant so it really worked out nice it 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 first was a backup part that was kind of sunk in the mix, and I said, "No, let's bring that thing up and make it prominent." It's it sounds too good. So, I was say, when I first heard uh, "Love Gone Wild," it um, it struck me as a track which um, is so instantly recognisable as, as your good self. Um, it could fit on any of the solo albums, really. I thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, and uh, although. It is a little bit more thrusting and a little more heavier. Um, it's got an attack to it. And in that respect, I think how I was writing some of this material, I was getting aggressive, wanting to write something a little heavier. It was just turning out that way. The last couple of years, I've been hanging out with a lot of metal artists and, and jamming with them at uh, the NAM show, mm. uh, different events, uh, being asked and called to come up and sing songs and, and play. And uh, some of them want me to do some of my Silent Rage material or my solo material or some covers. And uh, with that, I've been, you know, I got into that kind of mold of it was it was fun to do that. And so there's always going to be an element of melodicness with my writing. Of course. But I can turn on the, you know, a little bit more aggressive side to me. And I thought it was needed. I think, you know, people miss that. Everybody's always asking about Silent Rage and, what are we going to do something again? So I wanted to give the fans something that they knew I, I had been in the past, which is, you know, a hard rocker. And, uh, so that's, that's what I did. Speaking of different, um, styles, etc. I'm, I've got to ask you while I've got you on the line, um, about Southern highway. Cause those of you who are not familiar with the album, obviously it's a, it's another side to you, a more bluesy side. Um, I absolutely adore that album. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that was uh, a love of mine to to go ahead. I I had been uh, I put a band together called Electric Caravan yeah. back in two thousand nine, and from those uh, jams spawned me to start writing, and we put a band together. A friend of mine, Paul Cassidy, and I, uh, you know, put this band together and started to go out, and we picked a lot of classic you know, uh, blues songs, blues rock songs, as far as covers to start with. And then, like I said, uh, I started to songwrite for us and, uh, we, we kind of became a showcase band then with only a few, you know, we had enough after a couple of years, we had enough material to be an original band, um, blues rock, and then pepper in the strongest blues covers. So it was, it's been, that was a lot of fun. And from that, I thought, I should put out this album, you know, and it already has 
the the sound and stylistic sound that I ha- am is a regular Jesse Damon album, but it's got that you know that flair and that mm. right turn, sounding southern and sounding a bit southern rock. So, I mean, I can I remember talking to you. Um, cool, must be some years ago when you were t- first uh, uh, mulling about uh, starting Electric Caravan. I remember at the time thinking, you know, this is this should be interesting, and uh, I've got to say, it doesn't disappoint. Right, oh, thank you. Are you going to look at yeah, uh, doing any other mater- uh, any other albums in that vein? Yes, I mean I have, uh, like I said, I have a strong pull and love for that genre and that style. I, I've always loved, you know, uh, the blues rock and and uh, blues artists, the uh, the legends that I grew up with listening to, you know, Clapton, of course, and and Hendrix. Um, all the rock blues influence players, yeah, uh, Gary Moore, um, you know Johnny Winter. So all that I took in and liked a lot of the songs, liked a lot of the solo playing. So I incorporated a little bit of that in my style uh, when I was learning from the greats. And then, just uh, as a conscious effort to give a nod to some of those players, I kind of I. I've tried to keep that in mind in writing some of these new songs with Damon's Rage. Uh, and I'm talking about like the classic rock songs and the classic 70s. Sure. Uh, from from Ted Nugent and The Purple and, uh, of course, Zeppelin and, you know, any of that feel. Um, I was, I've always been a, a big blues rock singer, um, uh, you know, fan as far as, you know, Plant and Coverdale, Paul Rogers, you know, guys like that. Um, there's a certain heart and a certain uh, intensity, and uh, you know, they, they just they grab you with their the way they uh, they sing. So that's something that I I always try to incorporate uh, within my own music. So that was kind of a nod I was given to some of those players. Um, keeping them in mind and trying to channel a little of them into Damon's Rage. If we talk about, um, obviously, you playing live, uh, you know, I, I brought this up on, on quite a few interviews, and um, funny enough, I was on the Monster Rock Cruise a few weeks ago and talking to a lot of um, American music fans, and they were sort of shaking their hands and sorry, their heads and sort of saying that they the live music scene in, in America is just really suffering at the moment. People just don't seem to be interested in going out and seeing original live music. I don't know, how, how do you find it in uh, in your sort of area? It is. Uh, it has slowed down. And although there are bands that are still playing out and they don't draw as much as they used to, mm. uh, you know, here and there, you, you get a good uh, billing and you get a good concert coming in and the big venues. Clubs, you know, have changed so much because of the uh, generational change, you know, and, and what their abilities are and what they grew up listening to. So it's not the same style and genre as, you know, hard rock, melodic rock, uh, blues rock. It's a little more contemporary in sounding. Uh, some of it is good and I enjoy some, but... I'm always when I go out, I search for kind of the classics who are out there. And there's a there's a theater in Beverly Hills that I go to quite often called the Saban Theater, and it caters and plays to all classic bands. I just went and saw, uh, you know, so many different uh, great rock bands. I, I saw Sticks there earlier this year. Um, a couple of years back, White Snake played there. Um, you know, just so many great bands that you want to, you know, still have playing out live and, and uh, playing around the area in L.A. And so um, it's a sad thing to hear, you know, but if an artist gets an opportunity and wants to travel or wants, or, you know, it's still possible for them to come and play, Uh I would rather play at festivals than do club tours because you can reach many more people and fans. Uh, people that, you know, they, they see you in one performance so many more. 
Uh, I'm working on landing some fest this year, hopefully in Europe. We're in talking with some people right now. I have been in negotiations for some dates here locally in L.A. and, and the state side. So, uh, yes, I want to perform live, you know, and, and try to bring Damon's Rage out to people. Um, the bigger the city, the more the competition of, of different genres, you know, from hip-hop, rap, country, blues. Um, it's all a battle, you know, for, for some of the same people to come to your shows. Uh, it's a melting pot in Los Angeles, and it's just crazy. I guess it's, um, for those of us this side of the pond, it, it seems somewhat um, odd. I mean, the, the you know, America's just so well known for, for producing so many uh, great rock bands. Um, and yet here, the, the, you know, the music scene here and in Europe is incredibly healthy. You know, I mean, there's, there's so many new festivals um, popping up. There's so many new young rock bands who are hungry, f you know, for... Um, to get out there and play and produce new music and you think you'd assume you know america would be yeah. the same so it is quite a shock you know i i agree uh it's almost flooded with uh some new talent as well as the classic talent that still wants to be out there but there's a there's a certain conduit that every band has to go through and if you're kind of stuck in the middle where, you know, you, you're not a real big name and you're not a brand new hot commodity, you're kind of lukewarm in the middle, right. you kind of fall through the cracks because it's the bureaucracy of trying to get on a bill for a, a festival is very tough. Um, I have much better luck at trying to land something for Silent Rage because of the name and the history and the... the you know, direct uh, genre style. Mm. Uh, as a solo artist, you know, I can change and I, I have the ability to try to go after maybe a Southern Rock uh, Festival or, a, you know, a Blues Fest, and I have played those. Um, for me to go after a Melodic Rock Fest or a, or a Hard Rock Fest is harder for me just because of my name not being as big as Silent Rage in my world. You know, to look at it that way. So it's harder. And people might not realize that. You just don't go make a phone call and go, yep, no. I'd like to be put on that. Uh, please, you know, I mean, it just doesn't work that way. It's, uh, it's a lot of uh, phone calls, a lot of negotiations. I've been on negotiations right now for this one festival supposed to be happening in May. It's a big festival put on by the promoters who do Coachella and right. uh, uh, the L.A. area. AEG and they're doing it in Redondo Beach. They did their first one last year and they called me to be and they were involved uh, and interested. So there's a good chance I'll do this, but um, it's still, I've had a, you know, over a half dozen calls with them and we still haven't solidified it. So, <laughs> so if you got, yeah. um, if you got a phone call and approach us, you know, um, we would like Silent Rage to play, uh, say, a festival in 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 europe or even something like the monster rock cruise or one of the, the other similar cruises you know would you take that yes and i have tried to contact uh, monsters of rock and i have not gotten word back there was someone who was trying to help me with that and got me the email and i wrote the email and never got a response so what do you do with that i mean i i have tried to circumvent and go to someone else uh that might be maybe a step you know as equal in uh prestige as as a, a booker or the owner or something but it's very hard to to break the mold they have certain people that i don't know what their their protocol of uh stature of bands but i mean some of those bands you know in fact were after us and you know the they didn't, you know, sell the kind of records as many as we did. And they didn't, you know, have the pro high profile back in the day with some of those artists as us playing on Headbangers Ball every night. Mm. You know, so there, I don't really know. I, I think part of it is we're not out there playing and trugging along, uh, you know, year after year and putting out albums like I am. Yeah. Uh, so, but the thing is, what if they don't realize is, Silent Rage is kind of a well-organized 
a well-oiled machine, we're like a, a really comfortably fit glove. Anytime we get back together, we fall right back into place, which is a very magical, cool thing. Sure, we have to rehearse and nip and tuck and then have it uh, tight again, and, and, and that doesn't take long. But, uh, you know, the, the friendship and the passion, and, you know, we're like brothers, so um, I'd say the thing that gotten in the way is life itself you know moving of on and doing other passions having other responsibilities things like that so um certainly from i would um, have to say that um for silent rage because i am focused right now on my new album it's just too hard to do both right now yeah but my wish uh and what i'd like to do is write this coming summer and fall with the guys that would be and fantastic. Then at some point next year, have Paul Sabu record our our next album. I'll I'll never say our final album because you don't know that. So it's mm. just the next one, and I know a lot of people want one because uh, you know we need to get back into having the the real high quality. And I think it it kind of suffered a little bit the last uh, there's too many destruction uh, not destruction too many distractions. Um, recording that last four letter word album. So this time <clears throat> make sure with Paul everything would you know, would not be released that wasn't quality. Um not to not to jab at anybody specifically, but it's just, you know, I know Paul's standard yeah. and that's what we need to have. That's why I go to him and work with him. So Well I was if gonna I can make that happen, I think a lot of Silent Rage fans will be happy, including moi. Yeah, including me, yeah. <laughs> what I was going to yeah. say is, I mean, certainly for getting on the Monster Rock Cruise, what, I mean, fan power certainly helps. Um, when you look at, uh, I don't know if you're aware of Swedish band Heat, um, the Monster Rock uh, were absolutely pestered the hell to have that band on the boat. Um, they they got them on the boat. Uh, a lot of people certainly uh, who were on the a lot of fans were on the boat had never heard of them, um, but they absolutely blew them away. And they're now suddenly everybody's like shouting, "We want them back!" But uh, that was absolute fan power nagging Larry to okay. get them on the boat. Yeah, I hear that, and you know, we're, it's probably a thing where you know he is really a band that tours and, and is out there and doing it a yeah. lot and has a, a considerable amount of uh, ready and willing fans to jump and help. Whereas, you know, if you're not on top of it and you're not working it, um, you know, that's maybe the, the falter of us and, and not being able to land some of these things. Um, we've almost been a, a pick and choose and, you know, we fit it in when we, when we, uh, when we're ready to do it, we open up the door and come in and we do it and have a great time and do the best, uh, job, uh, you know, but like I said, uh, there's been distractions and, and, uh, all our lives of silent rage guys, you know, life happens, you, you know, you have kids and raise kids, you, you have, uh, oh, yeah. other offers and possibilities uh so yes yeah, well i think I if um have... if if you uh announce to site uh, silent rage fans that um you're going to work on a new album etc i think there will certainly be um quite an amount of excitement um i think we, which will build up to a release so i'm going to keep my fingers crossed for it uh, hey you know you know how much i'm a fan of the band anyway so <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jesse, it's been an absolute yeah. um, treat talking to you, as always. Um, yeah, I, I'm always excited uh, when you release new music because, um, I, you know, you've, you've not disappointed me yet, so, so we're, we're on a good track record with that. I, I wish you all the, all the luck with uh, with Damon's Rage um, going forward, and I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed that whether it's um, with Damon as a solo artist or with Silent Rage or as both that uh, you manage to uh, get yourself on a festival over this side of the pond because that would be absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on today. And uh, a big thanks to all my fans who've supported me. I owe all my deepest gratitude to you all and I do it all for you. Jesse, thanks ever so much indeed. You take care.
All right. Thanks, Dan.